Hi everyone, today I shall discuss about the very important uh, topic that is the spinal cord. You know the length of the spinal cord is 45 centimeter and it extends from the brain. You see the from the brain, the lower part of the medulla and up to the L1 vertebrae. And you will see in the lower part, as the spinal cord ends at the L1 vertebrae, all the nerves below the L1, that means the L2, L5 nerves, L1 to L5 nerves, the five sacral nerves, the coccygeal nerves, all come out from the branches. And this portion of branches is known as the corda equina. Corda means tail and equine means horse so it is like the horse tail female there is the girls they do not have horse tail they actually possess the ponytail so that is the smaller one and you see the lower part of the spinal cord that is it ends in a tapering portion you see here this is the tapered portion and this tapered portion is known as the Co that is the conus medullaris. So this is the conus medullaris. This is the conus medullaris and from which the phylum terminally comes out. So this is the phylum terminally. You see in the lower part where it ends that is at the level of the coccyx. So you will see the spinal cord. Now how will you identify the spinal cord? Its length and you will see it is covered by the meninges. This is the dura mater. And when I cut the dura mater, you will see there is the arachnoid and the pia mater, the thin one. And you will see the pia mater it forms a ligament and this ligament is known as the ligamentum denticulatum. By this small ligament, they are attached with the dura mater and you will see the rootlets of the nerves coming out. And this rootlet of the nerve, the pierces and ultimately forms a thick nerve. You will see this is the thick nerve when it comes out from the dura and then it comes out through the intervertebral foramen between the two vertebrae you will see so this is the vertebral canal into which you will see this spinal cord is situated this is the model of the lumbar vertebra sacrum and you can see here the how the corda equina looks like and you will see this is the real look of the corda equina and these nerves are coming out as the sacral nerve you will see how big it is and ultimately it will form the phylum terminally next is that how will you identify the upper part the upper part you will see in the section you will see there is the h-shaped gray matter and in the lower part you will see here there is the corda equina and how will you identify the anterior surface and posterior surface in the anterior surface there is a fine groove you will see and this is the anterior median sulcus and in the posterior surface you will see that there is two sulcus the posterior median sulcus so along the sulcus as you see in the anterior median sulcus there is lies the anterior spinal artery here lies the posterior spinal artery one pair spinal cord is very important because you see if there is any tumor pushing the spinal cord or if the intervertebral discs it protrudes then the area 
where it is compressed in this region there is some difficulties either there is severe pain that is radiating towards the lower limb somebody says is the sciatica but this shooting pain is the distribution of the sciatic nerve also there may be pain that goes in the disc prolapse it will goes from the uh, region of the waist downwards to the lower limb another thing is that the arterial supply of the spinal cord it is extensive because it is supplied anteriorly by the anterior spinal artery posteriorly by the posterior spinal artery and in each segment you know there are cervical segment of the spinal cord there is uh, the thoracic segment of the spinal cord lumbar segment of the spinal cord and the Mm, cox is sacral segment of the spinal cord and the coccygeal segment of the spinal cord in the segmental region the artery supplies from the segment that is known as the segmental artery or radicular artery and compression of the spinal cord may be of different variety you know there may be the hemiparesis that is known as the brown sequard syndrome and minute difficulty occurs in cases of different type of local anesthesia now i will tell you the anatomical position of the spinal cord how will you hold the spinal cord in anatomical position you upper end is that is you see the horizontal cut will be there and there is a shaped gray matter you can visualize here lower end is identified by the cauda equina bunches of the nerve how will you identify the anterior and posterior aspect in the anterior aspect you will see there is the anterior median fissure and in the posterior aspect there are two sulcus that is the posterior sulcus you will see posterior lateral two sulci so in this way you can hold the spinal cord in anatomical position good day i am professor shivani mojumdar i am teaching anatomy for last 40 years i have three books exam oriented text anatomy at a glance it is just released the third edition and you will get it in the channel description thank you everyone